You are listening to Three Kitchens, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network. Locally grown, community supported. Join your hosts, Aaron Walker, Heather Dyer, and Sarah Somasundaram for some good old home cooking. Today's episode of Three Kitchens is sponsored by Pod Power. With Pod Power, our sponsors are making it possible for us to amplify the voices of Albertans with Alberta podcasters. This episode, the Edmonton Community Foundation is helping us give a Pod Power shout out to Book Woman. Book Woman is a podcast about editing, publishing, and writing Indigenous stories. Three Metis librarians representing nations from across the homeland aim to inspire Indigenous peoples to share their stories in whatever form that they enjoy. Guests include Indigenous stories from diverse mediums like podcasting, burlesque, books, comics, social media, films, music, and everything in between. You can listen and find out more at bookwomenpodcast.ca. Welcome. Here we are once again, Three Kitchens Podcast. I'm Heather. I'm here with Sarah and Erin. Hello. 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 And we're going to be talking food. But first, Sarah, tell us what you what were you were up to this week? Yeah. <laughs> food icons first, right? Food icons. Yes, it's been a crazy week. But on what was it? Wednesday? Tuesday? Tuesday night. <laughs> Lost track. I can't even remember what day it is. It's been a nutty week. But um, so my favorite chef, Roy Choi, he had a kickoff party, I guess, for season two of Broken Bread. And it was live streamed on the Taste Made website. And Wolfgang Puck was on it. And Chef Alice Waters. Ah, yes, from um, Chez Panisse. Yeah, just if you guys haven't caught Broken Bread, um, season one of Broken Bread, it is food around like ethical and sustainable themes, right? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. each episode will talk about a different aspect of life and how to keep eating good food while having a certain amount of consciousness around the environment. So I got to hang out with them for two hours. It was fantastic. <laughs> and then I took a picture. I just have to tell everyone of me uh, watching the show. And he liked my post, guys. He liked my <laughs> post on Instagram. So I like just over the moon every hour and the hour I reminded my family about it. <laughs> And they were so annoyed with me. But isn't it I like the quickest so you've happy. ever gotten out of bed and was, or texted us? Oh yeah, I just like, I guys! actually jumped out of bed and I was, was like, like seven o'clock around. in the morning. <laughs> I the woke up morning. and I saw that he liked my post. Right. So <laughs> yeah, the next morning my phone beeped and I was like, oh, this is Heather telling me we have to work out today. No. <laughs> It's Sarah. Roy Roy Choi. Choi. Uh, <laughs> Roy Choi likes my photo. I was like, wow, she does get up early. She lies. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Broken Bread season one and two now you can stream for free on Tastemade. Oh. So you should check it out. It's a really, really good show. It's a little bit emotional. It's, it's, it's really fantastic. Mm. And Lots of different themes. One of them is cannabis, actually, cannabis cooking in season one. Mm. And in season two, I think they get released every week. Ooh, exciting. Ah, yeah. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, definitely. And then tag him again. Don't forget to tag mm. him on this episode, guys. So he it's can okay. Our post it's okay, we will do. I, I, Roy Choi, we're coming for you. That's right. <laughs> Your number one fan is... Wow, did is... this just go from like... Fun and enjoyable to somewhat threatening. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming for you. Sleep with one eye open. Yeah. Only oh, on I social was... media. Wow. Okay. So Sarah's dream came true. She was hanging out yes. in Roy Choi's food truck. Virtually. Oh, virtual food truck. So Heather. Yes. <laughs> Here we are. Can we have your attention, please? What the listeners don't know is that we have been talking about all sorts of things that probably won't actually be in the episode but that have taken us on little tangents and yeah it's been a bit of a broken episode I had to leave halfway through to go fetch a kid from school so it's the world we live in it's It's the magic of editing (laughs) 
<laughs> so <laughs> I wish we could take a journey to Italy <gasps> because this is an Italian recipe. Maybe one day we can do that. Mm. I'm pretty sure if I go to Italy, I will never come back. That's what I keep saying. Very possible. <laughs> we don't get to go there, but we get to eat something that is an Italian recipe. Have you had cannoli before? Yes, I have. I don't actually think I've ever eaten it, but I'm going to make it. It is a fried pastry shell mm -hmm. with traditionally a ricotta filling in it, a sweet filling. Oh, is that what's in it? Yes. Uh, but you know me and dairy, we're not always friends. So I am going to make the ricotta because I think the milk fat's actually quite low. I think it's only like 4% or something. Right. But I thought I might also make that uber delicious coconut whipped cream Ooh. that Aaron made for us for the persimmon pudding. That's right. And I might fill some of them with that because that's just so damn delicious. And then I can eat more of it. <laughs> I've maybe had it once or twice. And I think both times I was like, eh nothing to really write home about oh so okay I, well we're gonna I'm, find out you better they better i better like them no <laughs> <laughs> or else no i'm interested to see so the the cannolis that i have had have like a lemony kind of taste to it the filling has a lemony taste the filling to it. does that, oh. yeah is that what you are the recipe says okay. uh, let's see what the recipe says so the dough is flour icing sugar salt egg butter marsala wine oh. um yeah interesting yeah, right and okay. and a very small amount of cocoa powder it's like this odd sort of recipe you're gonna make your dough a soft dough mm -hmm. knead it about 10 minutes so you get you know a nice ball yeah rest for 30 minutes or up to two hours. Okay. Okay. You're going to be rolling the dough out very thin mm -hmm. to about uh, 1 16th of an inch. I don't even know how to tell mm -hmm. when I've gotten to that, but I'm figuring if I use Aaron's pasta bike to roll oh. it out, this might help. That's right. 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 Yeah. I think so. It's available for you for sure. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that would make it easy. So what you're making is, and then you cut them into uh, like a, a three or four inch round. So you're making little okay. circles with this thin dough that's been rolled out. Yeah. And then what you do is wrap each one around what they call a cannoli mold mm -hmm. and then use an egg wash to kind of sort where it overlaps. So it sticks together. And then you put that whole thing, okay. mm -hmm. deep fry it on the mold. So I, instead of buying them, I had my husband go buy a dowel, a wooden mm. dowel. I believe it's an inch dowel and cut it into pieces and sand it down. And then we used walnut oil to kind of seal it. They're about five inches long. Yeah. Wow. So that gives you a sense. So it's going to be wrapped around here. It's going to be about, yeah, you can see how small that is. It's going to be about that yeah. big. And then you pipe your filling in each end. Yeah. Right. And that like after it's fried, you take it off there, obviously. You pipe your filling in each mm -hmm. end and you dip it into whatever kind of fun. Sometimes you see it with mini chocolate chips or pistachios or right. dried fruit or something usually on the end. I can't believe you've already made these dowels. I'm sorry. The amount of effort already. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I was like, I'm not because I think if you bought them, they're metal. Oh, but yes. I was like, I'm not going to track that down and buy them. So I saw a right. DIY yeah. and someone okay. said, you can just make them out of wood. And I was like, well, let's do that. One of them has gone missing. He cut, <laughs> it's so funny. It's the mystery <laughs> in the house right now because he cut 10 of these out of the dowel that he bought. Yeah. We only have nine and they were on the counter <laughs> the first day. And I think the cat knocked a few of them down, but I picked them up and then I was like, one is missing. And I don't know if it like rolled <laughs> way far under the fridge where I just can't, cause I've been looking and I can't find it. <laughs> it's disappeared. <laughs> Anyway, it'll turn up years later. Yeah. That, so if you make the traditional ricotta filling, the rica it has ricotta. You whip the ricotta like with your stand mixer. Yeah. And then you sift in powdered sugar and you kind of fold it in mm -hmm. and that's it. Ooh. So oh, ricotta wow. and powdered sugar. What made you what made you want to make uh, cannolis? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had like so 
some sort of lovely story, whatever. I don't really. Yeah. I was just like, what can we do? And my friend is going to help me. We're making them together. So right. in, just in case it's a two person job, I don't know. Sure. Yeah. And I'm not that experienced deep frying stuff. I have to say deep okay. frying intimidates me a little bit. But your rosettes turned out fantastic at Christmas. So, mm-hmm. okay. Well, that's, if anyone those can are do pretty this, easy. you can do it, Heather. <laughs> Oh, thank you. You can do it. I find it really difficult to maintain the temperature of the oil on my gas stove. Ah, so oh, okay. we'll have to see how it goes. Oh, I saw a chef show about somebody who had been making cannolis for generations and generations, and they were rolling out each little disc individually. That's why I want to borrow the pasta bike. <laughs> I would, I would borrow, I would borrow the pasta bike. It's supposed to be super yeah. thin, and you want it consistent as well. You don't want thicker bits and thinner bits, right? right so that's right, why yeah. I think it would be hard to, you know, maybe generations upon generations, you've learned to roll it yeah. well. When we lived in our condo in Earlton, we used to go to this place called Mercado a lot, which is like that version of Lena's, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I used to eat a lot of cannolis. In fact, my daughter, she was in my tummy at that time. She was (laughs) formed with um, chocolate cake, cannolis, cannellonis, and (laughs) ravioli. Oh, Just Mercado. My my, my daughter is made from Mercado food. (laughs) (laughs) So she's like half Italian and half Japanese. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Sorry, kiddo. You can't ever escape it. I know. (laughs) So I guess that recipe didn't mention lemon, Sarah, but I would think there's, I've seen recipes for chocolate cannoli. different kinds, right. So even the dough is made a bit different and then the filling would be chocolate. So I think um, you could probably flavor that. I mean, ricotta and icing sugar, you can flavor that in whatever way you like I would think that'll go any which way for sure that'll be exciting to have one of those again it's been a long time it also has the marsala in the dough which I thought was an interesting I wonder how that flavor comes through right Mm. well I have some of that but I also have some of the one that you gave me so we could maybe use the milder one maybe not the super heavy sweet one yeah I don't know oh I wonder if it'll be nice enough on Saturday that we could do the frying outside mm-hmm. 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 I have, to, have to think about it how cold we might like to be or not just drink enough <laughs> wine while you do it and you'll always stay warm <laughs> okay so what kind of oil would you use if you were doing this I would use something neutral flavored sunflower oil what about coconut I have like a big tub of it does coconut oil work for deep frying I don't know let's see hmm Sarah google it yeah it's excellent for deep frying Oh, well, maybe we'll use that. I've got like a giant tub of it. Hmm, that might be the oh. thing. Is it help to use coconut oil for deep fry? Yes, it's really good to use coconut oil for frying stuff up, but deep frying is not good for you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> she, just, she just made an obscene gesture. <laughs> That's right. If you're going to deep fry something, just go for it. Have fun. Eat it's not it. like you're deep frying things every day. And this is dessert. Exactly. This is not like the meal. So yeah, I can't wait to try it. That's like It's just bringing memories for me. <laughs> I don't think I really liked it that much when I did have it. There was nothing special about it. Maybe it wasn't well done or, you know, I, I have not ever it... been to Italy. So that doesn't matter. I went there and I didn't eat it. I'm pretty sure. Oh. I don't remember eating it. I just ate my weight in gelato. That was my preferred. Oh. If anyone would like to donate dessert. or send Aaron to Italy fund, you can. <laughs> what is that called? What are those funds called? Go fund me. You... Go fund me. Go yeah. fund me. Yeah. <laughs> send Aaron to that. Italy without her children, preferably. <laughs> Send Maybe me back to Japan, back. guys, if you're if you're doing this. You then. <laughs> Where are you going, Heather? I haven't heard. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> pick one. I mean, pick I'll one. pick anyone, anywhere, honestly. I'd like to go to Portugal. I've never been there. There Ooh. you go. Portugal. Yeah, I'll drink all the wine. We're yeah. close to each other, Heather. We can, Spain's our halfway yes. point. Yeah. Done. Let's yeah. hit all three. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, stay tuned for uh, cannoli treats coming your way. Yes. Join us in La La Land. Tell us where you want to go. Yeah. (laughs) Share your dreams. Where do you want to listen to this podcast from? (gasps) Yeah. Ideally. (laughs) Yep. You can listen to us anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't forget. Yeah.
This episode is brought to you by Park Power, your friendly local utilities provider in Alberta, offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. In Alberta, you get to choose who to buy your internet, electricity, and natural gas from. If you switch providers, nothing changes about the delivery of these utilities to your home or business. If you have an existing contract, you're going to want to find out the terms before leaving. If you don't, then it's even easier to sign up for Park Power. You as the consumer have the choice of who you pay your bills to. Why not choose your friendly local utilities provider? Learn more at parkpower.ca. Welcome back, everybody. I feel like it's been a while since I made these cannolis, so I hope I remember (laughs) exactly (laughs) what went down. I feel like so much happens in a week, but now a week is like a month, it feels like. (laughs) Yeah, and let's not forget it's February, which is like, Uh, I don't know what happens in February, but it's like time has no meaning. (laughs) Everything's yeah. like nothing has meaning. backward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So right. I made the cannoli, not just me. I had a friend, but I'm just going to talk as though it was just me. Not that okay. she wasn't there to help me, but it's just easier than trying to remember that we did this. Okay. <laughs> These cannoli. Okay. So let me tell you what was in the dough. I think I went through ingredients before, but let's just quickly yes. recap. Two cups of flour, quarter teaspoon of cocoa powder now you tell me what is the point of a quarter teaspoon of cocoa powder Color? i have no idea okay. <laughs> honestly have no idea i don't know <laughs> i'm just Very making stuff up <laughs> well and i wanted to ask because i was like what's the what's the point of this i don't know two tablespoons of icing sugar pinch of salt one egg an eighth a cup of cold butter quarter cup of marsala wine more if needed so this is your liquid that's going in there right Okay. Um, oil for frying and an, an egg for egg wash to seal the little rolls, whatever you want to call them. Right. Okay. You're basically just mixing it by hand, kind of making a dough and putting in enough wine to form a ball. Pretty simple. And then take it out and knead it for about 10 minutes on the counter. And then you've got a ball of dough that you cover, leave to sit for 30 minutes up to two hours. I think ours sat for about an hour. Okay. And then we used Aaron's little pasta bike, which is that machine that rolls Mm. out the dough. And it worked fantastic Mm. on at least the first round. Okay. So, okay. I took a chunk of it, maybe a, I don't know, a third of it or a quarter of it. I Mm -hmm. rolled it out just a little bit with a rolling pin to kind of get it flattening because this is kind of a stiff dough. This is not like nice and soft fluffy dough it's quite okay. stiff that was I think why the pasta bike worked so well was yeah. because I did if we were just rolling this by hand it would have been quite difficult to get it thin and you want right. it to be one sixteenth of an inch is how oh, thin right. you want the dough to be so I think to roll it with a rolling pin being that it's kind of a stiff dough would have been a bit of work yeah so, yeah I mean if you're an Italian grandma you you're used to making these with the rolling cannoli. muscles yeah. yeah yeah exactly maybe you're okay but I was happy to have the pasta bike because I right. think that helped can I say that like all these times that I've seen people rolling out pasta or rolling out these doughs by hand in Italy they always have a much lower countertop or work surface to work uh, on yeah so yeah, they yeah. can kind of like put their Lean in their weight on right. it and roll it because I always feel like when I'm rolling out things by hand I'm like up on my tippy toes yeah, trying yeah. to get that like effort and force behind me because yeah. I just you know yeah. they all have these lower work surfaces yeah maybe that would make the difference like maybe use the kitchen table instead of the yeah. countertop or something yeah. good point good point okay so we rolled it out quite thin and then you you use a three and a half to four inch cookie cutter or or whatever round shape. I used a little glass bowl. That's what I had that was big enough Perfect. to cut out uh, little rounds. And then you're going to wrap that around your form. So we had mm-hmm. the dowel, the wooden dowel. Right. And you can also get, I think if you buy an actual cannoli form, it's usually made of metal and it's hollow. Ah, uh, um, yes. These were just little five inch long, uh, I think an inch dowel. I think. So you wrap it around and then where it overlaps, you use the egg wash to press it down to stick it together. And then you put the whole thing into the deep fry pot. So we actually used uh, coconut oil, which worked Mm -hmm. 
great. And I actually think I've always had a little bit of trouble with deep frying on my gas stove because keeping the temperature consistent right. can mm-hmm. be a challenge because it does seem to get hotter and hotter as it goes. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how to keep it consistent. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I found the coconut oil seemed a bit more stable that way. It didn't like jump up the temperature the way like a vegetable oil tends okay. to. Anyway. And it wasn't as stinky, you know, mm. sometimes like hot oil is a bit stinky in your kitchen. The coconut oil worked great, I thought. Mm -hmm. So you pop that in there. We just did one at a time. I think it would really depend on the size of your pot, how many you could do at once. And you don't want them to stick to each other. And you want to be able to get your tongs in there and flip them around. You need to Mm -hmm. be able to kind of turn it to get, because they float. So you need to get all sides. And that was a little bit tricky given the size of the pot. Try to get a wider pot. You don't need it super deep because they float, right? And Mm -hmm. then just enough room to get your tongs in. And you kind of have to roll it and hold it there because it tends to want to flip back around. Got it. Okay. Okay. So So do you think that if you had used that metal dowel with the, and it was hollow inside, would it have just sank then maybe? Because then the oil would have gone through. That's what I was just going to ask too, because wood float. I wonder. I just wonder. I wonder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to sink right to the bottom and stick. Exactly. Exactly. So they must be made to float the way you want them to float. I do think you need some sort of form though. Like I had read that, you know, in a pinch, you could like form some tinfoil, put it around. I don't think it would have worked as well. And it would have been hard to handle. I Mm, think getting it in and out and then getting your finished shell off the dowel. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, that wasn't really my job. I'll just say my friend was doing that part. She she had, she mastered it. I think you have to kind of twist it a little bit and then pull it. Like you have to be a little bit careful because once they're fried, they're a little bit crispy when they come out. Right. Ah, yeah. And I wonder if the metal slides a bit better, like maybe it's designed to not stick maybe or yeah. I mean, the wood worked absolutely. And it's a cheap, easy way to do it. If you've got the tools to cut one up and sand it down, worked great. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I mean, it's fairly simple. You're just, you're making a dough, you're rolling it thin, cutting it in circles, wrapping it around a mold and then deep frying it. So pretty simple. I found the dough as the dough sat like the, that's why I said the first chunk of it that I put through worked perfectly. Yeah. I think it got harder to work with as it sat. So I kept it, I kept it wrapped up in plastic when, while we were using one. And then I go to get the next piece. It's a bit stiffer. The last chunk of it was like, wow, this is not rolling out well. Like I, it seemed to dry out and kind of stiffen up really quick. And I don't know why. Maybe it was the gluten, just like forming more gluten bonds or whatever they do. (laughs) Maybe we were not moving as fast as like, uh, I don't know. So would you suggest then to roll out all of them straight away first and then start the process? Yeah, maybe, maybe get them Ah. rolled and in your little circles, get your little circles made and maybe just cover those Mm -hmm. up. At, like with a damp towel or plastic or something and then and then go as opposed to leaving it in a ball right because i i don't know why it just felt like i was like why is this so stiff as we're going, it's getting harder to roll mm. yeah i mean it still worked and everything but i think the the ones that were a bit puffier and had more air in them were the mm. earlier ones they just seemed oh. lighter and easier and very yeah. interesting mm-hmm but I would say that the good part about the cannoli is the filling more yeah. so than the cookie part, right? The right. pastry, right? Well, I like both, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, well, maybe it's the whole package. Mm-hmm. Right? The filling's where you get to have fun. Mm-hmm. So when we made them at my house, we did the, the ricotta because I had for Latin to put the coconut cream in the fridge overnight, oh, which is what right. you need to do to make coconut whipped cream. You need to put that in to oh, chill. It has to be cold. I had forgotten yeah. and it was like, I'm not even going to attempt to whip up this warm coconut cream. <laughs> so I had the ricotta because I wanted to give it a try. And so we did it according to this recipe. Oh, by the way, I'm using a recipe from Cucina by elena.com is it What's dancing that? kitchen i'm trying to translate it because i'm weird that's all cucina means kitchen by yeah. elena elena is the person who oh is cooking 
I Tuchina. thought maybe I was thinking Bailar. Bailar. What are you thinking, Baila? Okay. Yeah. Oh. I was thinking Baila. You thought my pronunciation was just so crap. Was, that <laughs> she must have meant. Well, no, I thought it's the Italian side. So maybe oh. in Italy it's Bailena, where Baila oh. <laughs> is the Spanish. I don't know. Come on. We're we're taking everyone on a linguistic butchering it's, here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's Elena. Bye, okay. Elena. Okay. Bye, Elena. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like that, <laughs> though. I like dancing all. in the kitchen. That sounds pretty good. That's what I was... <laughs> sounds good. So whipped ricotta, you're just, you're just whipping it, and then you're folding in powdered sugar, and that's okay. it. And then you pipe it in either end, because mm -hmm. attempting from one end all the way through to the other end doesn't work. It's like, it's not going all the way. You kind of put it in one end, put it in the other end, dip each end into you traditionally, had. apparently mini chocolate chips is quite popular. So I had that yeah. and also chopped pistachios was the mm -hmm. other thing I used. That was the good stuff. Yeah. I love that. And I would just say ricotta, mm, not a lot of flavor there. I mean, I liked tasting the sort of traditional way of doing it. None of us were like wowed by it. We were kind of like, yeah, they're, they're pretty good, I guess. Like, you know, we had my family and then my friend Lisa and her husband, and we were all kind of like, yeah, they're, I guess they're good. But it wasn't, there was nothing like, mm, this is like, yum, I want another one, <laughs> you know? And there was no like extract or flavoring with the ricotta? Oh, nope. Hmm. Just a bit of sugar. But you could do that, right? I was going to say, I wonder if putting something like a vanilla extract or some sort yeah. of lemon juice or something in there would taste good. Yeah. yeah. So we talked about how, I remember Sarah was talking about Mercado. Um, yeah. You would find all kinds of fillings, I right. think. And okay. even the dough, you would find chocolate cannoli oh, or right. like sometimes even the pastry is flavored differently. This was a very, I think, trying to be a very traditional basic like a basic, basic recipe the sicilian okay. cannoli right. here's your kind of traditional recipe right right yeah so we weren't wowed by the filling so the next day when i made mm -hmm. them for you guys mm -hmm. i did have the coconut cream in the fridge overnight so i made the coconut whipped cream which is just whipping up your coconut cream and adding icing sugar into it i added a bit of lemon zest and just a little lemon juice to that yes because okay. I wanted just a little something mm -hmm. even though I love that coconut cream and I could just eat that like straight up like coconut cream with icing sugar mm -hmm. that's like it yum. may or may put not it... have been piped out of the bag <laughs> into my mouth at some yeah. point <laughs> <laughs> exactly put it in a bowl with a spoon and I will just eat that like so tasty so I thought that that was in my, for my taste, I like that much better than the ricotta. Right. So cool. tell me what you thought. I thought it was so good and definitely heard, um, tasted the lemon in it. Okay. Yeah. Which I loved because that reminded me of the stuff I used to buy from Mercado. Mm -hmm. And the kids were with me. So obviously I, I did share. And so we had a really fun time piping and yeah. putting that all together. And I thought it was delicious. I, I think you did good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I thought they were really good. I was surprised by how much the dough had puffed. Like when you yeah. said that you were rolling it so thin and then I got them out and I was like, wow, this dough seems like way thicker than I expected. Like I almost expected it to be flat and crispy, but it was kind of puffy and crispy. It wasn't like bready or anything. It was crunchy. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah it was crispy. Yeah. I think if I could go back because it wasn't as crispy fresh because they were a day late. Right. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, maybe I'll say not late. I, I feel like I'm shaming. They you were day old cannoli. You were late. <laughs> <laughs> they had not been made fresh that day. When it sits overnight, the moisture gets in there, and then it it's not as crispy. I wonder if just popping it in the toaster oven or even the oven for a little mm -hmm. bit to warm it up and crisp it again would have worked. But I was trying to taste like the marsala in there. I know. No. Oh, okay. I didn't. <laughs> I was even, trying to yeah. think about the like because you said there was cocoa powder in it before, and I was trying. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. But I loved the cream in there, yeah, like the coconut cream, and then the little toppings. And they are much better mm -hmm. straight out of the oil, cool pipe. Yeah. Eat like, like anything yeah. deep fried. Yeah. Obviously, it would yeah. it would be best right out of the pan yeah. or pot, right? Yeah, but, exactly. And I think like it's just so cool that you made them. Yeah. 
They were fun to make. I'd have to say they're kind of fun. And if you want something that's not really any more difficult than say a rolled cut cookie, but it's a little kind of like elevated, you want something a little fancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're having like people over or something, or if you're having like tea, I could see it like on a tray for like high totally. tea yeah. or something. Oh, Cause they look that would be good. special yeah. as opposed to just a, like a, not that there's anything wrong with a flat cookie. Yeah. <laughs> I have no problem with eating a cookie, but it's just like an, like an extra fancy kind of, yeah. And they're really not that difficult. Mm-hmm. The difficult thing I think would be just the timing of it mm-hmm. because you want them to be fresh, but you don't want to be dealing with hot oil as you have guests or, right. <laughs> you know, whatever. So I think, I think, think even if it's the same day yeah it'd be better elena did say in her recipe dancing um, elena she did say for best results fill them just before serving so that's why i gave you the pastry and then the filling separate so you could pipe it yourself because if once the filling's in it's gonna soften soften a bit Mm -hmm. right yeah so you you want to definitely fill them right before you eat them easy thing to do with kids like of any age if you've already obviously not the hot oil part but the filling part because it's so easy to just pipe it in and then dip it in what you want I mean if kids wanted sprinkles on the end or whatever Mm -hmm. it'd be a fun little way to I don't know bake up some fun with your kids yeah I I thought it was really I my kids had a lot of fun putting it together and you know what you were saying pipe it from both ends we were able to pipe it from one end and it pushed right through and actually fell I know that's why I said don't do it that way because it just goes right out the other side (laughs) it's like well Uh, yeah, because I tried to do that too. And I was like, oh no, there's a reason Uh-oh. she said to pipe it from either end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it's great. a pretty pastry. It's, you know, it's tasty. It's not, maybe not going to be like, wow, this is the most amazing thing I've ever eaten. But I think they're worth making. It was, I think it's they were impressive fun that you made them. People yeah. go to the store to buy them, right? So I, I think it's very impressive that you made mm-hmm. them. And, and I delicious. love that you made your own molds and everything. It was like 100% yeah. homegrown. Totally. <laughs> it really was. And if you want to make them, you can borrow my molds anytime you want. <laughs> Did the 10th one ever show up again, by the way? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think the cat rolled it off the counter and it disappeared. That is really funny. I like that. <laughs> but you don't need, you do not need 10 of these things. Even if you're going to buy them, you only need like maybe four because- right. You get a couple ready. You got one or maybe two if you have a big pot going at once. You pull it out. Only takes a couple minutes right. before you can pull them off. Like you're not doing them in mass production. Right, right. A really awesome treat. That is a really fun, different thing to do for a mm-hmm. cookie. Would you make it again, <laughs> Heather? I would. I think I yeah. would. Yeah. I would just. Um, I don't know. I think I'd maybe play around with different dough. Like look up different mm. ways to flavor that dough. Yeah. Because even mm-hmm. though I liked it, I didn't think it really had much of a flavor. Yeah. And I think you could play around with that, like make chocolate ones or, you know, different red velvet ones. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you could do anything really with this. Is This sounds very fun. All Super right, there you cool. go. Cannoli. I don't Thank know what you. the Italian expression, I feel like there should be something to say, but I don't know it. Just like Mama There's made. just a very big just hand like Mama gestures. Made. Very big just hand gestures. Make them polite. <laughs> And now for the fine print. We at Three Kitchens gratefully acknowledge we are telling these stories in the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 Nations in Southern Alberta and the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We honour the rich tradition of oral storytellers on this land who have come before us. You can find pictures and recipe links on Instagram and Facebook at Three Kitchens Podcast. If you like and subscribe on your podcast player, that helps more people find us. 